Welcome to Theology Thursday, a weekly video where we discuss theological and or biblical topics. A question that I've been asked many times over the years, and perhaps you have been asked as well, is the question, uh, what about people who have never heard about Jesus? What about people in some remote village and they've never heard even the name of Jesus, much less the story of him coming into our world and dying and rising again and us being sinners and our need for Jesus? Can they go to heaven? Do they all go to hell? Is there a chance after they die to hear the gospel and then determine whether or not they want to confess and believe in Jesus? Well, the good news is you and I do not have to guess at the answer. God has given us the answer about what happens to people who have never heard about Jesus. And it's found in the book of Romans, chapter 1. <clears throat> and so starting in um, uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 18, this is what the Bible says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Now, what truth is it? Here it is, verse 19, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, namely, now a couple things that should be seen by, uh, about God by everyone from both creation and um, our own conscience that God has given us. His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Okay. So they may not have ever heard of Jesus, but they can look in creation and realize there is a creator, and this creator must be all-powerful, and therefore we owe our allegiance and our worship to him. Uh, this is obvious from just looking at creation, and that's what the Apostle Paul says here. God's shown them through that. So why do they not do that? Why do they worship the rocks and the trees and the birds and the moon and sun and all of that? Well, because they suppress the truth, as he's already said. And so here in verse 21, he's going to explain it further. For although they knew God, meaning they knew there was a divine creator who's all-powerful, they didn't honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. So because their heart is wicked, they're inherently and by nature sinful, they rejected the fact that there would be an all-powerful creating God to whom we owe all allegiance and honor and glory and worship. And instead, they worshiped physical images, idols. They became uh, idolaters. Therefore, verse 24 says, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Okay. And so then he goes on and describes sin some more. And, and, um, and in chapter two, he says, Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you judges, from passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, practice the very same things. So here is the answer to the question, what about people who have never heard about Jesus? God has revealed himself that there is a creator and that he is all-powerful and almighty by looking at creation. Anyone who recognizes there is an all-powerful creator who is all-wise, all-powerful, supreme, to whom we owe our allegiance and our worship, would get into heaven without hearing about Jesus. The problem is everyone is born with a nature inclined against God, a nature that is sinful. Um, the Bible's just abundantly clear on this. I mean, one of the clearest is the heart is deceitfully wicked above all else. Um, the leopard can't change its spots, you know, those sort of things. Uh, we are by nature the children of wrath. In chapter 3, of Romans, Apostle Paul's going to a long list of quotes from the Old Testament to show the inherent sinfulness of people. So the reality is, even though that could happen, it doesn't happen. And the reason is because people thinking they're wise, rather than submitting to an all-powerful creator who's made everything that they can see, start to worship the creation itself. They worship animals, or they worship rocks, or trees, or the sun and the stars, or whatever it happens to be. And so they reject 
the obvious truth that there is an all-powerful divine creator. Therefore, they will stand guilty before God on the judgment day. Not guilty of rejecting Jesus, but guilty of rejecting the truth that there's an all-powerful creator that they sense in their hearts, but they don't want it because people are naturally sinful against God. So because this is the truth, that those who have not heard from uh, the name of Jesus or his life are going to be found guilty in the judgment because they have suppressed and rejected the obvious truth of a divine creator. We feel compelled because of the lordship of Jesus to take the message of Jesus to those people because upon hearing the message of Jesus, Holy Spirit conviction, some, many, most of them will be converted. And so everywhere we've ever sent missionaries, at some point, God has honored the preaching of his word, the teaching of the truth of Jesus, and people have been and still are being converted. So our mission enterprise is driven, one, by the supremacy of Jesus. Jesus said, all authority is given unto me. Heaven and earth go therefore because of his authority. So we know that wherever we go, Jesus has the authority and the power and the right to save. And we go because we know that people are by nature and by action, separated from God by their sin. They suppress the truth. They exchange the truth for a lie. They don't worship the creator. They worship the creation. The Bible's very clear on that. Therefore, they stand guilty. Therefore, they need to hear the message. One, that you are guilty. You are a sinner. And two, you can be forgiven only by Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection on the cross. So if anyone asks, what happens to people who have never heard about Jesus? They can get to heaven if they recognize that there is a supreme, divine, all-powerful creator and that we are responsible to him. However, the Bible is very clear that they don't do that. People have never heard about Jesus. Instead, supplant the truth with a lie. Uh, and so they will stand in judgment, but they'll stand in judgment based on what they know, the truth that has been revealed to them, in this case, the truth from creation, and the fact that they've rejected that truth. So uh, people get to heaven by either receiving the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Jesus is the truth. Um, he said, your word is truth. So uh, Jesus is the truth. If we receive and accept the truth, we go to heaven. God has made everything. That's the truth. You receive that. If that's all the revelation that you have, that's all that you know about, you go to heaven. But the reality is people reject Jesus. They reject the truth. They reject the truth of a creator because they're sinful and they don't want to submit to a supreme, divine, all-powerful creator. Uh, they would rather worship something that they have a little more control and influence over, like spirits or animals or trees or stars or whatever it is, um, that they can make an offering and somehow that will um, manipulate that uh, deity to do something. So you get in heaven by receiving the truth of which you are aware, whether that's only truth from creation or the full truth from God's word about Jesus. And the reality is, without the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, no one's going to receive that. Why? Because we want to exchange the truth for a lie. Uh, so we're compelled because we know people need to hear the truth. But we also are compelled to pray because we realize that just the presentation of the truth is not enough. That presentation needs to be accompanied by the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. So I hope this helps you a little bit uh, to understand what happens to people who've never heard about Jesus. They're responsible for the truth that they have from creation, but unfortunately, they suppress that truth and instead uh, substitute a lie, which is idolatry in place of worshiping the one true, almighty, all-powerful creator. So let me just close out by saying this. Let's be thankful that at least in the United States, we have God's truth, we do know about Jesus, and when we receive the truth of God's word about who Jesus is and what he has done, then we know that we are guaranteed heaven forever. So God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful day.